Welcome to another episode of Sing For Him. I'm your host, Catholic singer-songwriter, Anna Nuzzo. St. Bernard's Church in Homer Glen blends rural and urban atmosphere as a church on the outskirts of Chicagoland. The church was built in 1988. Today, we're meeting with St. Bernard's Choir, plus the instrumentalists. Director Julie Kane and the choir invite us all deeply into the spirit of Lent. Truly, the depth of the people's walk with Jesus is reflected in their powerful testimonies and beautiful performance. Come along for the next half hour as we join St. Bernard's Choir in prayer and song. I think music is a calling. I think it's very satisfying and uplifting taking your music to church. It felt good. It felt like uh, I now belong, really belong to this church community. As I speak through music, um, when I play, that's, that's my stress relief. It's whom I am and it's become part of me. So to me, it's not something that I have to do, that I need to do, it's just something that I do. Julie Cade, and I'm the music director of St. Bernard Parish in Homer Glen. I owe everything about singing to my parents. Uh, I used to sing a lot when no one was home, didn't even know I could sing. And one time my parents, I was in eighth grade, my parents came home and caught me. I was singing at the top of my lungs and did not know they had come home. Uh, and the next thing I knew, I was in voice lessons with a neighborhood music director of a neighboring parish. And soon after that, I sang for my sister's wedding. So, and then I went on to sing in high school and work at the church I grew up in, and then I majored in music in college, and I've been singing ever since. And that uh, first voice teacher I had in eighth grade up until high school was the first person that told me, you can do this, you can make a living do this, to doing this, and this is your thing. And her name was Cecilia, and that's the patron saint of musicians, and I also have a daughter, Cecilia, because of her. The first choir director job I had, I was still in college, and the person who sat next to me in my theory class was a priest who had come back to school as a music major. And I got to know him, and he said to me, would you come to our church and start a kids choir and start a folk group? And I said, sure. It happened to be a church that my cousins attended, and I ended up staying there for 17 years. Uh, and then by that time, I was already had almost five kids, and thought it was time to stay home as a stay-at-home mom for a while. And then a couple more jobs, and now I'm at St. Bernard's. number one things choir directors learn is that everybody has a story. Even if they don't appear to have a story, deep down somewhere they definitely have a story. I'm Bill McKee and I'm a choir member here at St. Bernard's Church. Uh, my neighbor, Lloyd, who's the guitarist here, 
asked me to join the choir with him. So I started playing the flute and then got into singing. And then uh, as we moved forward, I got moved away from the instrument more towards the, my role as a, a singer. My name is Lloyd Ottenstraw. I was uh, been in the parish since the 80s. Um, back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, our uh, music minister played guitar. And he just had a guitar and a couple of singers with him. And I came to church and I said, boy, a bass guitar would sound really good with him. So I went up to him and he said, yeah, come on, play. And that's how it started. I didn't join choir until 10 years ago. Um, I was going through a job change and the choir director made an announcement. They were looking for choir members and I thought, I'm gonna do that. I've always wanted to do that, and uh, I'm gonna join. So he gave me a little audition, and by the grace of God, I got on choir. <laughs> I've been involved with music since I was eight, but uh, I, you know, I never really related it to church until I started with the choir. I just kind of to find a way to use my talent somehow, and there was an opening for instruments the music director at the time was asking, so I thought I would try it, and I figured music can't be that bad, right? So I thought I would do it, and then they were looking for singers, so I thought I'd drag my mother along too. And of course, when my daughter was growing up, being in music, they had a children's choir, so oh boy, she's getting enrolled in that too. So <laughs> I tried to get everybody involved. When our director, Julie, came to me and asked me to canter, uh, my first question was, why? Have you heard me sing? And, and she said, yes, I did. Uh, and she said, I would think you would be very helpful. So I went into it with a lot of trepidation, uh, as I never sang in public, for one thing, alone, in front of people. But at the same time, I felt that it was more of an expression that I can give to our church community. If I could help lead them, as I feel that song is prayer, uh, I, I decided yes. And after the first time, and I'm not going to lie, it was a little bit of shaking up there on the ambo the first time through it. but. I felt the comfort uh, in, in doing so and a connection with the uh, community here at church. As a music director, I really feel called to kind of take a diamond in the rough. You meet a lot of people who say, I can't sing. So-and-so told me I can't sing. And I just don't believe that to be true. And I've feel like that's the best part of my job is taking someone who says they can't sing and teaching them to believe that yes you can. Under the weight of the world, Father, forgive that they don't know what they do. Under the weight of the world, of the world, freedom can be reason people join a choir is never for the music. Music is really the least part of this job and people need you for a much bigger reason than the music. And I think many times people come to rehearsal once a week 
to escape whatever they've got going on in their life. I've lost a few people relatively quickly in the last year. It, it was very, very hard to come to church, to come to choir, um, and I didn't for a while. I knew that I could cry if I needed to, and my choir, they, they surrounded me, you know. Um, you know, I, they'd put their hand on my shoulder, or someone would grab my hand, and, or maybe they just let me recover. Um, and always, 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 I felt so much better after coming. I had taken a year off a of choir because my mom's health was failing and I was traveling. And I had just come back. We were waiting for our new choir director. Um, and Julie, Julie came on board, so I just met her. Our very first mass was October 29th, 2017, that we all sang together. And that day I came home from choir and my husband met me and helped me and told me we lost our, <laughs> our son. <laughs> It's so, and I didn't want to come to a choir mass. I wasn't ready to see everybody. But when mass was over, I turned to walk out and Julie was singing at mass and um, she's the first person I saw. And she just started crying and I just started crying. I didn't even know her, she didn't even know me. And she just hugged and I thought, okay, she's special and I feel safe and, um, I know when I come back that she's gonna support me and so is everybody else. This job is so much more than being a choir director because more than any profession, there's a ministry aspect and you have an obligation to be there for them when they need it, no matter what that is. Whether they need a hug, whether they're uh, really struggling with the loss of a loved one or the loss of a job, there's so many things. And when someone comes to you and tells you what's going on in their personal life, I think you have to take that with a huge responsibility. And when you do that for them, the music really grows. The number one thing that benefits from that kind of relationship is the music.
when the congregation comes to Mass on that first Sunday of Lent, they have to know that the season has changed, whether because of the decorations of the church or whether the music has changed. And it's definitely a choir's obligation to make sure they're doing that appropriate music for that season, especially in Lent. It's music too. You have to give up the loud, the fun music that you do in ordinary time. And so Fat Sunday for us has always been the day that you play all your favorite songs, your favorite loud and upbeat songs, because you're giving them up for the six weeks of Lent. So I think uh, when the choir misses that music, it's really teaching them the obligation they have to that congregation that makes that sacrifice of the Lenten music worthwhile. For me, especially at Lent, I know how the Virgin Mary Mother felt when she saw her son suffer and die. And I can't even get through a song at Lent without crying because I, I know how she, and she knew he was God, but she was, he was still her son. And I think of her watching him being scourged at that pillar and how, how she could possibly get through it. But she did because of God's graces and we do because of it. You get so much more grace when you participate and when you pay attention to the words in the readings and the music. I mean, it tells a beautiful story. It makes you feel closer. When I look at the season of Lent and the songs that we sing during Lent, it brings a realization of, of, of the message of what Jesus had gone through during this time period, the, the struggle. We're expressing the emotion of Jesus to others we have to make that expression and it becomes very real to us because we start living that in ourselves. So for me, it's an emotional time. There are certain songs that we sing that I have to be honest, uh, I have to control my emotions because in effect, uh, we oftentimes get so enveloped in the song itself and what we're saying that it becomes a real part of who we are. director, you begin to really feel like these choir, this choir, it's going to sound cheesy, but it's very similar to how you feel about your own kids, the pride you feel when you see uh, the pride that they have and the job they did. And it's a very interesting phenomenon that as adults, there aren't that many things in life that let you experience teamwork like a choir does. And there's so many people in the choir that could not get up and do some big solo and could not pull off a whole mass by themselves, but they sure can contribute when they have the strength of the person next to them singing with them. So that experience in teamwork can be so strong. For a non-musician, if you've never been in a choir, I think the people who've never been in a choir don't realize the energy that happens in the midst of the group as you're singing and as you know you're doing well. And that feeling is so contagious and that's truly when it feels like when the energy is really high, it feels like that's really when you're close to God. You're close to each other, you're close to God. 
sometimes I, you know, I'm thinking about what are we gonna do next? What's the next song? But then I look up and I see smiling faces and they're smiling at me and they're enjoying themselves and they're obviously getting something spiritual out of it and it centers me right back to enjoy the moment. Don't worry about what's coming next. And that sense of teamwork can just get you through so much. And I think that's just one of the best parts about being in a choir and being a choir director is watching people experience that. the good news. And that's what Shalom is doing, is bringing the good news of the Holy Spirit in action, renewing the face of the earth so that all people may know how good is the Lord, how beautiful is the work of salvation. Thank you, Shalom, for all you do to reach out, to lead the faith forward. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.